Hello guys, my name is Sorin and today I'm going to show you something that has never been done before. Nah, just kidding, I'm going to show you how I've built my Bluetooth speaker. The internet is full of this type of videos, but I want to share with you my version too. So in this tutorial, I will explain to you in great detail how I've built my Bluetooth speaker. What do we need for this project? The main component is this 12W Bluetooth amplifier board, which is very powerful considering it only needs a 5V power source. If we look closely at the amplifier board, we see that it has an audio integrated circuit for each channel. The IC is similar to PAM8403, which is a 6W stereo amplifier. I used one of these in my mini speaker system and it's very powerful. And now we have two 6 watts amplifiers in one board. But we need to specify three important things about this product. If you read the reviews, you will notice some people complaining about the Bluetooth amplifier shutting down at higher volume level. Since we have a Bluetooth module and two amplifiers in one board, you need a supply current higher than one amp, as specified in the product details. But this information is insufficient. You also need some good wires to deliver that current. If you first try it with test leads like this, you will lose a part of the current and the Bluetooth module will shut down when you turn up the volume. Two test leads like this, connected in series, have an internal resistance of 1.2 ohms. The longer and thinner the wire is, the bigger its resistance. Allow me to demonstrate to you how this will affect your circuit. Here we have a light bulb connected to a battery in series with two test leads. If I eliminate the test leads from this circuit and connect the light bulb directly to the battery, the voltage that reaches the light bulb increases from 3.2 to about 3.7 volts and you can see the light bulb producing more light. So I say throw away those rubbish test leads and use short thick wires like these which are left over from my power supply conversion video. Another important thing is the speaker driver. It's clearly written in red to use only 6 or 8 ohm impedance speaker drivers. I suggest 8 ohms. If you use 4 ohm speakers, the Bluetooth module will again shut down at higher volume level. And the last thing, a few people complained about the permanent background noise when music is played. This is normal. Why? Because there is no volume potentiometer between the Bluetooth module and the audio amplifier. The audio volume is modified from your phone, so when the Bluetooth module is receiving a signal, it delivers it to the amplifier at maximum volume, which also amplifies the background noise to maximum volume. This Bluetooth amplifier has a charging interface. You can connect a 3.7V battery directly to it and use a USB charger to recharge the battery. But I will not use this feature for two reasons. First. The charging interface doesn't have a battery discharge protection, so you need a lithium battery with a protection board. And second, I want to use two lithium batteries connected in parallel to double the capacity. I don't know if the charging interface is good enough to charge two batteries. So I'll use instead a TP4056 charging module with battery discharge protection which is very popular. I already have a 2000 mA lithium cell left over from my DIY voltmeter project. I'll use another identical battery from this cheap one cell power bank. This power bank has a battery holder, so you can also use it as a simple 18650 battery charger. These cells are almost brand new, I've used them only once or twice, but to connect them in parallel, I need to recharge them to have the same voltage. To increase the voltage from the battery's nominal 3.7V to the 5V needed by the Bluetooth amplifier, I'll use this 2 amp step-up converter. And I'll use this 2200 microfarads capacitor to keep the supply voltage stable. We also need a simple switch to turn the speaker on or off, and some LEDs. I have many speaker drivers, but for this project I've decided to use these 15 watts and 8 ohms Hi-Fi mini speakers, which have a rubber surround and are very powerful for their small size. And yes, now we get to the point where I calculate the speaker enclosure. There are three main types of enclosures, sealed, ported and passive radiator. For my Bluetooth speaker I've decided to make a ported box. 
In my opinion, this type of enclosure provides the best sound quality. So I have searched on the internet and find a website where you can input the speaker parameters and calculate the enclosure volume and suggested dimensions. The recommended volume was 5.4 liters or about 0.19 cubic feet for one speaker driver. It seemed to me that there is an error and the volume is too big. So I tried again on a different website and received a similar result. So this means that my portable Bluetooth speaker enclosure should have a volume of 11 liters. Bigger than these 5 liters water bottles combined. This is too big for my taste. I don't want it to become a boombox. So I designed a smaller box and used this leftover MDF sheet, which have a thickness of 8 millimeters. Or 8 and a half. Remember to always use protective goggles when working with power tools. Now I calculate, measure and cut all the pieces with my limited carpentry skills. In the end my speaker box dimensions will be 30 by 15 by 19 and a half centimeters with an internal volume of 6.6 .6 liters or about 0.23 cubic feet. I will probably lose some of the lower frequency but I can live with that instead of a big Bluetooth box with tiny speakers. After I cut all the pieces, I use sandpaper and a flat surface to smooth out the edges. Now the speaker holes. I measure the outer diameter and use a drawing compass to mark the holes. First I'll make a smaller hole, then I'll use an electric jigsaw to carefully cut the holes. This is my grandfather's wood rasp. It looks a bit rusty, but it will do its job. When using a wood rasp, you need to also move it side to side, not just up and down. Do not force the entire wood rasp length in one spot. I'll also use some sandpaper on the hole's edge. For the base reflex tube, I'll use this PVC pipe. Normally, the base reflex port should have at least one third of the speaker driver diameter but it will be difficult to use two tubes of 2.5 cm each. So I'll make only one tube from this 4 cm PVC pipe. I have only a few more holes to make. Now it's time to screw all the panels together. It's easier if you have some woodworking clamps. I don't have any, so I need to improvise. First, I made some 2mm holes and temporarily insert the screws to fix the panels in position. Then, I removed the screws to make some grooves for the screw heads with a bigger drill bit. I use wood glue to seal all the edges and the screws can be fully tightened now. The speaker drivers will be fixed with smaller screws, so I'll use this 1.5mm drill bit. I also drill the holes at an angle because I don't want the screws to pierce the panel. Now the front panel can be fixed in position with wood glue and screws. For the rough edges, it's recommended to use wood filler. But I forgot to buy some for this project, so I'll use just wood glue instead and sand it down later. To cover the screw holes, you can mix wood glue with leftover wood dust. After the glue dries, I use the wood rasp again to round all the edges. I'll use two-part adhesive to fix the base reflex tube. To paint the speaker box I'll take it outside, but first let's give it a final sanding and use a cloth to clean it. I'll spray a few coats of filler primer and try to fill some of the imperfections. Spray the primer or paint with horizontal linear moves, don't rush the process. After every coat of primer dries, use sandpaper to smooth out the surface. To paint the box, I'll use this great dark spray can and give it 3 coats of paint. And the speaker enclosure is finished. I should have used more wood filler on those screw heads, but nobody's perfect. Back to the electrical components. The batteries are fully charged. 
the correct way to connect them is to use a battery spot welder. But I don't have one, so I'll go with the popular but not recommended way and solder them. First we clean the contacts to help the soldering process. Many of you asked me what's up with this weird soldering gun. Well, it's a Romanian soldering gun made in Bucharest in the 80s and it's very powerful. This is helpful because I need to solder the wires as fast as possible. If I use this powerful soldering gun just a couple of seconds at a time and give the battery time to cool down, it should be fine. But if you heat up a lithium cell too much, you may permanently damage it and the cell can even catch fire. So be careful if you try this. After preparing the battery contacts, I'll use insulating tape to create this two cell battery pack. Now I prepare some wires to connect the cells in parallel. This battery pack will have a capacity of 4000 milliamps. Or less if the manufacturer lied about the cells capacity. Next solder all the wires according to this schematic. But before soldering the Bluetooth module, test the step-up converter and adjust the supply voltage slightly above 5 volts. I will remove the two tiny LEDs from the TP4056 charging module and replace them with one multicolor LED. I'll use the red color for charging, green color for fully charged and remove the blue pin. The two LEDs of the charging module have a common anode or positive, so my multicolor LED must also have a common anode. I'll use three flexible test wires to solder the LED and of course shrinking tube to insulate the pins. Let's test it. Red wire, green wire. Now when the battery is fully charged, the LED will of course turn green. I'll put some hot glue over the soldering joints, they are a bit fragile and may break when I move the components. The capacitor will be soldered directly to the step-up converter output. I'll replace the Bluetooth Tiny LED with a 5mm blue LED. For the speaker drivers, I'll use these tiny screws and washers to fix them on the front panel. Then I'll seal them with silicone sealer. Use some latex gloves or a simple plastic bag to spread the silicone around. We only have a few more wires to solder. Be careful when soldering the speaker wires. If you reverse the polarity of one speaker, the sound quality will be very poor. The switch must be soldered from outside the box. For the USB charger, I'll use a micro USB breakout. The next step is to fix all the components to the MDF with hot glue. The Bluetooth LED pins will be bent to 90 degrees, so the wires will be directed down. I'll also use hot glue to seal the switch. All the components are fixed in position now. You can also see some of the wires glued to the MDF panels. To increase the sound quality, I need to insulate the interior. I'll make the soundproof insulation from sponges. Four sponges like this will be used. It has a thickness of 6 cm. I will cut it in four pieces, so each piece will be 15 mm thick. I will cut the sponge in various shapes, so I can cover as much as possible of the interior surface. Now you can see the reason I glued the wires to the MDF panels, so I can cover them with the soundproof insulation. I want to cover as many components and wires as possible, I don't want any rattling noises inside my speaker, and I hope this soundproof insulation will compensate for some of the missing enclosure volume. 
the back panel it's easy to cover. Three rectangular pieces of sponge. Beautiful! The back panel will not be glued because I may need to remove it in the future. For example, to replace the lithium batteries. So it will be sealed with double-sided foam tape. Finally, we reach the end of this project. We only need to give it some self-adhesive rubber pads. To charge it, you can use any USB charger, even a power bank. And you can even charge it while playing music. And now let's test my Bluetooth speaker. It works and it's very loud. Look at those speaker drivers do their thing. I would like to show you the sound quality of this Bluetooth speaker, but it's difficult through a video on the internet, because some of the quality will be lost through recording, editing, processing the video by YouTube and finally your audio system, but I will do my best with this studio microphone. In my opinion, the sound is very clear and loud, but you be the judge. I forgot to test the current consumption, but I used it for a few days and fully charged it can run for 10 to 20 hours depending on the volume level. I know that the speaker has some rough edges, like here for example, but keep in mind I don't have a big workshop with fancy equipment. I just have two hands and some old hand tools. But I really like how it turned out in the end. It's not too small to affect the sound quality, but it's not too big, it can be easily carried. And it's very powerful considering that I can easily charge it with any USB power source. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing.